What up? 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 How are we doing? Hello, Gary. I'm at work. What are you doing? Take off your shoes. No, it's chilly. It's chilly here on this ice planet. Uh, hopefully. Hopefully the music's not too loud. Hopefully I'm coming through okay. Just thought I would quickly jump on just for some fun. To keep you guys updated on what's going on. At the moment, I'm animating a dinosaur fight. Yeah. I thought while I'm doing this for like a little bit, I will uh, stream it for you guys. As I have a spare moment. Why the hell not? Hey. <clears throat> About time, I know, I know. Lots going on in the world of me. So I don't always have the time to do things. So when I do have a few minutes, I'm like, well, why not? Just quickly throw up something, even if it's five minutes long. Just do something, you know. So we've got the Megalosaurus roaring in defiance. As the uh, Mega Raptor claws it at its back. And I like to give this, emphasize the teeth even more. some of those in for the back ones there we go just gonna refresh the stream for me just to make sure it's coming through okay <clears throat> Hot creamy fart. Okay, seems to be good. <coughs> I've also been coming down from a little bit of a cough. Someone I caught off my daughter. I was planning on doing my Magic the Gathering card video. Uh, much sooner than I did, but that was because I came down with the cough, so I didn't want to like record a video that was going to destroy my voice even more. This might look a little bit weird, but that's because it's going to be moving really fast, and I'm kind of guessing what it might look like in motion. Okay. Let's do the Mega Raptor now.
Very nice. Hello, Sebastian. Right, and now we need the tail. Yeah. And the annoying part is I'm gonna have to do all the little blue bits between the teeth. Merge those. <laughs> okay, that's nice. Oh, I just need to do the leg. So we'll start off with the colour and all the details. Oh, actually, ew, ew. Don't like this line. Oh, what am I doing? Let's make it a bit bigger for you guys. Fit screen, there we go. Uh, Sebastian asks, how are you feeling about the new Jurassic movie they are working on? Very excited about it, actually. Really excited about it. Uh, I like Gareth Edwards. I like uh, Godzilla. And uh, I don't think I'm overly as worried about the whole time frame, you know, uh, of it coming out next year. The reason I'm not overly worried about that, although I m did predict on Twitter that, you know, they might delay it. But the, but I think they can do it. I mean, it all depends on what the story is, and we have no idea what that story is. So it's very hard to judge at this time whether a 2025 release date is actually a bad thing or not. You know, depends on what they want to do. Um, but yeah, really excited. I have. I'm going to talk about it more on Jurassic Unicast channel tomorrow. Uh, if if. Uh, you know, my daughter stays asleep because <laughs> we've got a new baby in the family. So, if my uh, uh, if our eldest daughter wakes up and needs someone, my wife's busy with the baby, so I tend to them. But granted, uh, they you know stay asleep. I'll be on Jurassic Unicast channel tomorrow evening in the UK time, discussing more about my thoughts on it. But I just have a sneaker suspicion that the film might be crazier than some people think like people think oh co-op's back uh gareth edwards is behind the helm we're moving away from jurassic what jurassic world dominion did and, and all that sort of stuff and i'm sitting there thinking well i don't know about that i feel like them i've just got this hunch that it's going to be a crazier movie in terms of its concepts maybe than than people might otherwise think it I don't know if it's gonna potentially it might be but I don't know if it's gonna be the the quote-unquote return that some fans are uh, hoping that it would be um, yeah but we'll see we'll see what happens I'm really excited uh, yeah hello Camille says very excited well hello mr. t-rex how are you all hello Alex uh, thank you very much. Saying congratulations, MG and MJ Entertainment. Hello, Gary says wouldn't surprise me if they're still using another man-sized species dinosaur as a replacement of Velociraptor. Anyway, congrats on the new one. Thank you. Nobody in particular says bring back Black Sack. <laughs> yeah, I will. I will. Once, uh, once things are settled with the the little one, and I've got more time, I'm definitely going to bring back a Black Sack. I'll get Will. I'll get him to come over. 
Uh, we're planning on going to see the new Godzilla soon. Uh, the X Kong, whatever that movie's called. We're planning on going to see that together. Um, but yeah, so we're, we're we're still in contact. He's one of my oldest friends, so of course we are. It's just uh, obviously a lot going on. So Black Sack is lower on the priority list, but I still still want to do it. I've definitely got some other gems that we can watch. How's episode 5 coming along? Slow but good. Slow but good. Um... Oh, one second, I'm getting a call. One second. Sie mir bitte den Weg zu der Brauerei zeigen. Wo ist die Brauerei? Entschuldigung. I've been trying to learn German. I got one of these uh, cassettes that teaches you while you're asleep. I don't know, I don't know. I, I still can't speak the language, but I do dream with uncompromising efficiency. And I've been practicing uh, drinking my Holston pills like the Germans, too. They drink it cold. Well, <laughs> they're not an emotional race. Not a flicker. Conventional bladed fans chop the air, causing unsettling buffeting. The Dyson fan has no blades, generating smooth, cooling air. No blades, no buffeting. Find out how at Dyson.com. When you've got just 28 minutes to save the entire planet, the clock is ticking. You better hope you got the right computer. Godzilla's hiding, and it's up to you to find him. Just buy a medium or larger drink. If you find a Godzilla, use your decoder to reveal what you've won. Uh oh. I think I need a bigger ball. This summer. How fast can you swim? Critics are calling Lake Placid this year's Anaconda. Don't miss the movie everyone is screaming about. Swim to me! Lake Placid. I'm rooting for the crocodile. I hope he swallows your friends whole. Rated R. ago, a movie captured the imagination of the entire planet. Go as fast as you can. On May 23rd, Steven Spielberg will take you to a world beyond imagination. It's coming back! The Lost World. This film is not the yeah, event. Starts about. Friday, May 23rd. Um, where are we looking? This is an extraordinary little device, this is. It plays... There we are. Oh. 
Yeah, that's what we're talking about. Literally, my wife just went, I need help getting the kids in, <laughs> into the house, because <coughs> she can't carry both of them in. Anyway, uh, what are you guys saying? All I want is a good film, honestly, says MJ Entertainment. Yes, I would like a good film, but I also, my only other stipulation is I hope that they don't uh, step on the toes of what's been previously established. And I'm not just talking about uh, the newer films, I'm talking about Jurassic, Lost World and Jurassic Park 3 as well. Um, obviously, with the stuff we wrote for the viral marketing websites, there's so much content we wrote in there that's like hidden and Easter eggs. It's like for them to, you know not step on our toes in that content would be a miracle but you know I'm, I'm not expecting them to not do that and go through everything we wrote but anyway <laughs> did Jeff Goldman just advertise drinking in the morning of course he did Am I going to work on a website for the new movie? Don't know. I have no idea. So let me just make sure. Oh! <laughs> I haven't got the music on. I just realised. <coughs> Hello, Saurian bot. Realize this playing no music on. Creamfart asks, do you think Edwards was too serious for Godzilla? Will that energy make its way to the new JP? Uh, too serious for Godzilla? Um, no, I don't think he was too serious for Godzilla. My biggest grievance with that film are um, just the end fight sequence is too dark. Like the lighting, the you know what, how you see stuff is just a bit f too flat. And, and I wish they brightened it up a bit more. I'm all for it like being dark. I just I just think they could have brightened it a, a bit more. <laughs> and I do fall into the camp of like people who you know they there's that running gag with Godzilla twenty fourteen where it's like, you know, they cut away from the from the monster action. Like I, I get that, but not for the airport sequence uh, where Godzilla's first introduced. I'm not too fussed on the cutaway to the kid watching TV from that. It's more that when the male Muto and the Godzilla meet and he's like, let them fight or whatever. It's, uh, you know, they show them clashing as the doors shut and I'm like, you could have just shown a little bit more of a fight there. It's a, it's a kind of a nitpick, but yeah. So I hope, I hope we do get some I hope he's learned some lessons from that. And I'll say this, if Universal was smart, uh, I say Universal, I mean Amblin, if Amblin was smart, 
they would uh, definitely be in contact with Brian Cranston after he did that interview with Bryce Dallas Howard where he expressed interest in the new film. They'd be silly not to at least give his agent a call and see if he is interested in being in it because him and Gareth Edwards have worked together before. So maybe Jurassic could bring the redeeming arc of Brian Cranston and, and Gareth Edwards by being a character in a new Jurassic film who, you know, m survives through most of the movie, <laughs> at least. Doesn't die halfway through. I don't necessarily have too much of a problem with him dying in Godzilla 2014 because I kind of like the story of what he passes to his son to say, like, go and save your family kind of thing. Uh, protect them at any costs. Uh, you know all that, but if he's going to be in a Jurassic, yeah, he can't die halfway through. You got, you got, you got to make him a staple character throughout the whole film. Hello, animations by Juice. MJ Entertainment says you finally did a stream where I was free to join. Lovely to be back. Excited for episode five, and I agree. I also hope they don't step on established lore as well. <laughs> MJ Entertainment also says I actually like that we saw it as the door shut well it's like it's a kind of misconception with Godzilla 2014 I will admit where they say we don't see that fight because you do because as soon as the door shut we cut to them Halo jumping into the middle of the fight and we see a brief bit of it there but there just needed to be like three or four shots after that door shut I think of them like actually duking it out in the rain you know Rewatch Monsters. I I will admit I did not like Monsters when I saw it when it when it came out. Um, I think I saw it relatively soon after it was released on DVD, I think, and I didn't like it. I thought it was too boring, and I thought the the ending with the monsters, you know, at the gas station or whatever, where they just the monsters meet up to mate in front of those people. I was like, yeah. I wasn't fussed by it. I could see why he got the job to do Godzilla, and Godzilla won me over to Gareth Edwards. But I, I wasn't impressed with Monsters. I was impressed that he managed to do it all on his laptop or whatever that story, you know, with the backstory of it. And um, whatever went down there, I'm impressed by. But the actual film itself, meh. I remember it being kind of dull. Maybe I need to give it a rewatch. down.
I am very close to... F I say close now, but I'm close to finishing the frames for this shot. It just needs to spin it round and the jaws of the Megalosaurus, you know, spin past the camera. Spin past our view. And then we'll cut to a different shot. So there's like, I don't know, maybe seven more of these to do. Maybe ten if I'm going to be uh, realistic. You're hoping to see the Buck T-Rex in the movie? Yeah, I mean, that would be cool. Thing is, what's interesting is, like, Universal... Uh, Jurassic has been, sort of, notorious for the script changes with each movie. And... Oh, so he's, like, roaring out. So, basically, I just need to... And it's interesting to see, you know, them going all in on a script that obviously has been written a while ago. You know, it's, it's, they're very happy with the draft, and they they want to go ahead with this film uh, desperately. So it's the, you know, all the reporting says it's like a strong script. Uh, I find that interesting. Like, what could this story entail that is so succulent? That they they are jumping at it with open arms. <laughs> I mean, at this point, it might be his old JP Free script, <laughs> or uh, at least his. Uh, he he told them to make JP Free simple, and then steals it for his own. Right, so I'm just going to save this layer. If it will save, there we go. I will, I will say though, what I found funny with um, the fandom's reaction to this new film over the course of the last few weeks is obviously when David Leach was attached to be the director, there was all this negativity from fans. Obviously Co-op was named the writer and fa the fandom was like, yeah, we're back! Jurassic's back! We've got a writer! Blah, blah, blah. All this sort of stuff, right? Which is fair enough, David Coet. Cool. Um, but then when David Leach was attached to the movie, everyone was like, hmm. Hmm. Don't know, it's an action movie. Don't really like his body of work. I was one of these people, by the way. And uh, I don't know, lost all interest. They had me with Coet, but now I'm worried. Now I'm worried. And then he got taken off the project, and now Gareth Edwards is there. Everyone's like, great, we're back. We're back. Co-op Gareth Edwards, this is great. And the thing that I find funny about that is, because I'm in that camp, I prefer Gareth Edwards and, uh, to David Leach. No disrespect to David Leach, it's just I don't think he was, he's a Jurassic director, whereas Gareth Edwards, I think, is more of a Jurassic, direc Jurassic director. But the thing that made me laugh was the story wasn't w wouldn't change. No matter who's behind the camera... They're going all in on this script. So for people who were like, mah, mah, well, David Leach, David Leach, and I'm saying this to myself as well as everyone who was in that camp, it's like the story was going to be the same. So obviously the director changes how it's visually presented to us on screen, um, but 
the story and all the information that's contained within is pretty much would have been the same as far as we know because Universal are like backing the script with everything they've got uh, supposedly so I just found it funny that like on one hand they're like we're in the next they're like no we're not in and then they're like we're in and it's like the story hasn't changed through any of those uh, through the any of those um, reveals of who's working on the movie so David Leach may have produced a film that mm, may have looked quite similar to what or felt quite similar because the story was the same to what Gareth Edwards would have produced but we'll never know but I just I did just find that funny Camille says, I understand what you mean, but the change in directors makes it so different, even with the same screenplay. Yeah, I mean, I'm not, yeah, obviously. It just made me laugh. It's like, the story is the main thing. It's like, obviously, the director plays a role in how that story is presented. But it, if the story is the same, like, take Gareth Edwards. Had Gareth Edwards directed Jurassic World Dominion... And it was exactly the same script as what Colin did. Do you think all the people who didn't like Jurassic World Dominion would have suddenly been won over by Dominion? Had it been like the same? I doubt. I doubt they would have. I, I, I bet they would have been even more angry. Because <laughs> a lot of the people who don't like Dominion uh, didn't like the previous movie or what Colin did, so... <laughs> <laughs> nothing new to them but if Gareth Edwards it had been more of a betrayal and you know what they say the deepest circle of hell is reserved for betrayers I'll bring this up when I'm on the uh, Unicast uh, podcast tomorrow. I'll ask Clayton, because he really doesn't like Jurassic World Dominion. I'll be like, do you think Gareth, Gareth Edwards had done it? <laughs> we'll see what he has to say. Bot says, thing is that David Leach was let off because he was wanted to make changes so I can understand why people reacted that way. True, that is true. He did want to make some changes, so maybe they were for for the best. But you know. Maybe he, his version would have been different. Hot Cream Fart says, Speaking of hellish betrayers, did you watch Tucker's interview with Putin? Yeah, of course I did. It was, uh, it was interesting, and then meant nothing new. I don't know. Oh, I really love Dominion. It's not perfect, but it's... Uh, I find it fascinating.
That's better. Oopsie daisy. All right, see you later, Gary. Enjoy the bus ride. If I'm still here when you get back, I'll say hello again. Teeth. Okay, and then let's do the Mega Raptor. Basically, just want to use this uh, same frame, basically. Slightly twist it, slightly make it smaller. I think of the second Godzilla X Kong trailer. I mean, there's so many trailers out there now. I, I've, I've, I've not watching them, so I want to experience that movie uh, without really any spoilers, even if they're in a trailer. Those and then we're going to add the color. 
We'll start with the green spikes on the uh, green stripes. Sorry, on the Mega Raptor, uh, Megalosaurus, Mega Mega Mega. Hot cream fast says, are there any essential qualities you look for in a disaster movie? Um, there's got to be an element of like. The feeling of it being real. So, like Twister. That's why Twister is my favorite disaster movie because it 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 captures what tornadoes are like, or at least invites you into that sort of world. And uh, I will say the new Twisters uh, looks, I'm, I'm not going to lie, it looks pretty good. I was very skeptical when I heard they were making a sequel to Twister. And uh, and I was all ready uh, to, to hate on this new one. And I watched the trailer the first time and I was like, yeah, you know, looks alright. And, the, and then I watched it again and I was like, well, hang on a second. There may be something here that I'm overlooking. And I noticed that the camera usage, that was something that jumped out at me. It looks very similar to the first one. It looks like they're, they're respecting the visual uh, camera work of part one. They're not going to do all these, they're going to change up the formula of how it looks. They're going to keep it very, you know, twister in nature. A lot of swooping camera angles. And there's this one shot in the trailer where it's low to the ground. They're reversing away from a tornado in this like white jeep and it looks awesome. It looks really good. It looks like it's straight out of the first film. And then I noticed that actually the storyline, as far as I could tell, looks like that someone, I'm, I'm going to assume maybe they're related to Helen Hunt's character or maybe even Dusty. There's going to be some character relation somewhere to, to the old cast. But they're doing this like experiment where it looks like they're going to bomb the tornadoes. Like at the beginning, it shows like Dorothy Five being launched into a tornado, but next to Dorothy Five are all these yellow barrels. And then there's a line in the trailer where uh, they go like, "You tried to tr destroy a, you tried to destroy a tornado or something," and she said, "Well, we tried and failed or something like that." And I'm guessing the opening of the movie is they're trying to send sensors up for Dorothy Five up into a tornado and then detonate a load of bombs inside it and then record the the, the how quick it dissipates or what it does to the tornado uh, see how effective it is at um, trying to literally stop a tornado before it destroys a town or something like that but it goes wrong and all her friends die this is what I'm gathering from the trailer and then she moves away and then gets invited back and meets up with this renegade social media Influence the Storm Chaser, which is Glenn Powell. Glenn Powell, I think that's his name. Uh, his character, and he's like, you know how they call Bill the Extreme in in the first uh, Twister. He's like, we're gonna see a young, essentially like a young Bill, who is who is literally extreme. He'll he has that drill, that truck with the drills on it. And he like literally deliberately puts himself in the middle of tornadoes, and he's a bit reckless gets people in danger that kind of thing she teams up with him and you know they're like let's bomb a tornado and see if we can replicate this uh, experiment of yours uh, that sounds pretty interesting I'm not gonna lie I'm like okay I'm on board it's different enough from the first film they got a new cast uh, doesn't look like any of the old cast are in it so far but I'm, I would be surprised if they didn't have a cameo from someone from the first film um, and yeah, I just hope there's two things I'm worried about at the moment. Two things. Uh, I'm worried about the soundtrack. I want the soundtrack to have Van Halen in it somewhere. Rocking. I don't want dubstep. <laughs> I don't want. I don't want like new music. That's what I'm worried about. I want it to keep that sort of '80s feeling, '80s '90s uh, aesthetic with the score. And the characters. So I hope the characters are likable because the first film, they do a really good job of making the team that you follow really likable. 
you feel like you're when you're watching the film that you know them as well as they know each other. Uh, very good introduction to all those characters in that film. Um, and the only hint at that we get, obviously, aside from uh, Glenn Powell's character, is there's this one bit in the trailer where this guy yells out, Twins! We got twins! And it's a bit grating. I'm like, oh, God. But I'll, I'll give the film... I'll judge the film when I see it. But that, I feel like, is he going to be like the new Dusty? Is he is he essentially like that character? Um... But yeah, I just hope they make them likable. Hello, Mike Farm. I mean, yeah, it would be amazing if they did connect it to Jurassic. Like, I put out on Twitter the, like, imagine if, uh, you know, there's just a shot where they're driving along, they're about to chase a tornado, and they look over and they see a herd of Apatosaurus, uh, you know, Jurassic Apatosauruses fleeing. And then, like, a character's like, the world's changed. The world has changed quite a lot. <laughs> like, yes, not just for us storm chasers or something like that. It'd be just really fun, like never, and then never acknowledge it again. Like people would be like, "What? It's in the same universe as Jurassic? No way!" That would be absolutely incredible. Why is my pen not working? There we go. Yeah, so I've been won over. I'm excited for Twisters. And I didn't think I would be. It could turn out to be really boring. Or like a, a, a mess of a movie in the end. But just to say, at this time, 28th of February, 2024, you can officially consider me hyped for Twisters. And now the music is going to... So... There we go. The problem is this Twister outside the US and actually some of the uh, Yankees in the chat can confirm is the is the trailer for Twisters where in your country does it have the Universal logo first and then the Warner Brothers logo or is it the Warner Brothers logo first and then the Universal logo because in the UK the trailer I get is the one that has the Universal logo at the start um and then it says, like, Warner Brothers afterwards. And I don't know if it's, like, the same as the first Twister, because the first Twister was made by Warner Brothers, but outside of the US, it was distributed uh, under Universal. So it's considered a Universal film here, not a um, Warner Brothers movie. It's both. But which one comes first? Is it the Universal logo or the Warner Brothers? Like who who who's got the first in who's first in line in the trailer?
I mean, I might be thinking about it too much, like thinking into it too much, but if, if Universal have m more rights now over Twister, Twister fr the Twister franchise, then that's really interesting. Because before it was, yeah, it was Warner Brothers, so maybe Universal have managed to... Uh, buy the buy the franchise off Warner Brothers but like have like some sort of affiliation with them Amber Productions Universal logos first mm. so I might be overthinking it like I said but yeah it'd be interesting if they did if Universal did manage to win uh, Twister out of Warner Brothers clutches I mean, it is an Amberlin picture. That's the main thing. It's produced by Amberlin, so that's the that is the main ticket. Time for Dante's Peak 2. <laughs> Isn't Dante's Peak destroyed in the first one? Wasn't the actual peak gone? <laughs> there's, no, there's no peak at Dante's Peak anymore, right? Dante's Crevasse. That's a very different movie. Volcanoes regrow. I suppose they do. I suppose they do. Very nice, right. Save that. need another relic movie you know what actually yeah that like a relic sequel would be quite nice considering that that it's about those berries right so they could do anything with that get Rennie Harlan to direct it <laughs> Amber Products says, I watched Twister on Peacock a while ago, and that version had a Universal logo instead of a Warner Brothers one. Peacock? Peacock? You need to be watching it on old-fashioned DVD. None of this screaming... Screaming? Screaming shit. Streaming shit. Look, the DVD is a must-see. Why are you not must-seeing it?
Look, the, the description is in the shape of a tornado. Why are you not sticking with physical media? Come on. <laughs> a click at your face. No, that's awesome. The universal one, yeah, it's outside of the US, so. Animation by Do says, how do you pick colours for your dinosaurs when I model them for my cartoon? Most of them are brown or green. Uh, I literally, I just think about things that uh, you know, influenced by like the uh, green stripes on this Megalosaurus I'm going to create a mess it's literally just inspired by the chaos effect which is covered in a cobweb chaos effect velociraptor from Kenner that's, that's what it's inspired by I have that sat on a shelf I'm like yeah, do something like that Plus keeping, for the type of animation I'm doing, you know, the the green stripes help me work out which way round the dinosaur is and stuff. Because they're like arrows, and they go down, up to its spine and then down the other side. So like when it's turning and stuff, it, it helps me orientate how to draw it, basically. Hello, legendary. Alexandra says the finger clicking is that ASMR for us. gone too far ahead in the animation frames for what I'm doing here. Maybe. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to save this as M39 and do one in between actually. frame. Now I can see where it's meant to be. Literally go in between. You see you got the two lines, like one here, one here. It's like just go in the middle. arm um. 
and then same for the mouth basically wait uh, do the bottom jaw so it needs to be like a bit crazy at the moment but there you go that's better might just yeah hello dark crift Legendary says, oh, the news about Gareth Edwards doing Jurassic movie. Well, we, we just covered that subject. See you later, MJ Entertainment. Thank you for popping by. Um, safe to say, I'm excited. Um, I'm very curious what the story is, because that's my jam, you know, when it comes to Jurassic. Like, what is the, what is the story? How does it fit into the lore? You know all that sort of stuff. That's that's where that's my wheelhouse, and I love it. So I'm very excited to see what they do. I'm not as worried about the time frame because we don't know what the story is. You know, in terms of production. And uh, yeah, so all sounds good to me. bit gummage on this one even though it's probably gonna be blurry and you won't see it I have its tongue like oh, la, la, la. I feel like his head needs to be stretched out a bit more, so I might just um Yeah, do that. I believe Universal stated it was a sequel after Dominion, so I'm glad the franchise is still moving forward rather than a prequel, which I personally think is just going back to the island plot. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I suspect it's going to be post-Dominion, which I'm happy with. Because you can do anything, that's the good thing. And you don't need to worry too much about connecting to what came before. There's more. There's more things you can do. So, I welcome that. But even if it was a prequel, again, I wouldn't care, as long as it's a good movie.
very, so, very curious what the dinosaur roster is going to be, said Sorin Bot. Mm. I'd be really surprised if they um, don't include a T-Rex. Because the Velociraptors, you know, last movie Dominion, Blue was in it, but the, what, like, the Raptors... You know, storyline con concluded with basically the Velociraptor through Beta and Blue, um, combined with Maisie, basically saving the world. So, out of you know <laughs> all the trouble the Velociraptors gave humanity through the previous movies, including Dominion, because of uh, uh, the Atrociraptors and all that, they they did inadvertently uh, help save the world through through Blue's DNA or whatever. And um, a oh, beta's DNA. Sorry. So, uh, but saying that, I don't know if the Velociraptor story's finished. So, uh, I, well, I kind of feel like it is. So they don't really need to have Velociraptors in the movie, I don't think. But the T Rex, I'd be very surprised if they didn't have a T Rex in the movie. And they might not. I just hope they don't, you know, forget the old designs, you know. I hope they don't just have dinosaurs in it that look, just look completely, completely different from what's come before because, I don't know, it wouldn't feel Jurassic necessarily. Jurassic has a sort of style to its uh, dinosaurs that, if that's, you know, gone. It's like it might as well be a completely different dinosaur franchise. They have iconography, you know? Synonymous with the brand. Even if the T-Rex shows up for like two seconds, yeah, they got they got to have at least the T-Rex show up. All right. Legendary says, if I wanted to introduce a new dinosaur roster, you've got to pick Majungasaurus, the cannibal dinosaur, as the main villain, especially making an ugly, grotesque look to add the cannibal look. Yeah, you know, that sounds pretty cool. You'd have to have a scene where it kills and eats another Majungasaurus, so that'd be pretty dark, but also awesome. Soaring Boss says, once you have a style, you stick with it rather than change it for whatever reason. Yeah, I mean, they s slowly introduced feathers and stuff in Dominion through the Jurassic World series, and then obviously in Dominion you had the Therizinosaurus, but the Therizinosaurus looks like it belongs in Jurassic Park, like uh, in that in that style. Uh, the Pyroraptor, as much as the design doesn't bother me too much, you know, it does look like it kind of fits in with the Jurassic roster. It, it, it I don't know, it just wasn't as... I oh, know. Actually, you know what? I take that back. They did do something with the feathers. They made it swim, which was sort of out of left field, and I appreciate that. But yeah, it's like if they if they have all the dinosaurs look 
like they're out of I don't know prehistoric planet or something. It's like what's the point in what's the point in their dinosaurs looking like movie dinosaurs? They gotta have that feeling to them. Doesn't mean they have to be inaccurate, but yeah, just my two cents. You just have to have a style, you gotta have class. Plus, you know, if they, if they did adhere to, like, the utmost scientific research, then they would just look like the ones at a prehistoric planet or something like that, because that's just the scientifically accurate one. And so, obviously, there are, there'd be people out there who would argue, well, an elephant looks like an elephant. You know, <laughs> the elephants in Jumanji, do they, do they look like real elephants? Of course they do. But Jurassic, with the DNA, uh, genetic engineering and all that, they, they have their their, you know, get out of jail free card to make these things look a bit more movie-esque. A bit more designed for entertainment purposes. Dr. Saurian says, Jack, your thoughts on Chaos Theory and the amazing fight preview, it looks awesome. Is this the the Camp Cretaceous follow-up? They released something for it. Or am I mistaken? Am I, am I forgetting something? Chaos Theory, isn't that the new Camp Cretaceous follow-up? gonna have to go in a minute because it's my dinner time they haven't released anything about chaos theory I'm confused then Then I have no idea what you're talking about, uh, Doctor Saurian. <laughs> if they if they haven't released any fight sequence from Chaos Fury, I have no idea. Legendary says it would be pretty cool to see the JP dinosaurs fight against the accurate ones. You've already had it. You already had it, technically, in Jurassic canon. I hate to say it, but that Giganotosaurus versus T-Rex fight at the end of Dominion is that. Now, some people are going to be like, well, the Giganotosaurus did not look accurate. I know, but it did look accurate to the in-universe accurate Giganotosaurus. So... Just saying, they already just they they kind of covered that basis. <clears throat> Biosyn made an accurate Giganotosaurus. Ingen made a featherless or quillless or whatever you want to call it. A T Rex, a froggy saurus. It looked different, and that's really the only only real difference. So, what leaps and bounds between Biosyn and in gen there are there not much but we've still got that accurate versus not accurate Dark Griff says, Jack, I'd like to ask someone, was Jurassic World Dominion, was the movie censored? Uh, what do you mean? Censored. I saw the film in June of 2021 at a preview screening 
an early cut, an assembly cut, and it was pretty much exactly the same to what we got, except instead of having the opening 65 million years ago, the film opened with the T-Rex attack on the theatre, and then went into like the the now this, and you know there wasn't much different as far as I could tell to what we got aside from that for the extended cut. Sorry. No Fallen Kingdom was censored for that goat killed by the T Rex and Mills as well, I believe, in Italy. Hmm. I've never heard anyone say Dominion censored uh, Dark, Dark Crift. Anyone saying that is, is pulling your leg, I think. I mean, I guess actually saying that, one could probably argue that the extended cut restored a lot of the censored stuff uh, that you didn't see in the theatrical version. You know, you've got like the Oviraptor getting beheaded, you've got the, the other kill by the Allosaurus at Malta, uh, you've got the two guys getting attacked by Blue uh, and Beta, the, the hunters or whatever. Even though you didn't really see anything, so they did. They did cut out some of the some of the kills, quite a few kills um, that you see in the extended cut. So m maybe you can frame it as they censored uh, a lot of the movie, <laughs> but now you can get it in the extended cut. So they've de-censored it. Put it that way. Okay. Gary Pfeiffer says, I'm pretty sure the Alice was eating that guy was theatrical. So in the theatrical cut, you see the Carnotaurus roars at this guy and he falls onto a barbecue. He's on fire and then the Allosaurus comes along and bites him in the head. In the extended cut, that scene actually starts with the Allosaurus biting onto someone uh, and throwing them into the Carnotaurus, which in turn makes it turn and roar making the guy fall on the barbecue and then the Allosaurus comes up again and bites someone else on the head. So there's an extra person getting killed basically in the in that scene by the Allosaurus in the extended version. Mm -hmm. 
Alright, see you later, Saurian bot. Yep, that's good. Another layer. Hello, Krask. Degler World Jurassic Charlie. <laughs> oh, I need to. I can't forget to do the little gummy bits. There we go. Actually, you know what? I'm going to grab this whole section. All right, filter blur, motion blur. Cool, right, save that layer. And uh, I'm just gonna do the lines for the next one and then I'll call it quits for today. Come on, save. There we go. Right, so we've got that one, got that one, and now this one. Just need to make its neck a little bit thicker.
What do you guys think will get released first? Dino Defenders Extreme Episode 5 or Jurassic Park 7? <laughs> <coughs> I know which one my money's on. I want to get it so its jaw comes right up to the camera and you get a good old look inside its gob. <laughs> yeah, Gary. I'm with you. I think Dress Back 7 will come out before this episode of, or this chapter. This final of uh, Dino Defenders Extreme. Can Dino Defenders be released before Chaos Free or JP for Survival? No. No is the answer. Mm. 
Right, so... Okay, so I'm going to stop there, and you can see the next what the next frame is going to, or this frame of animation is going to look like, and then the head will pass past the camera and get pulled back like this, and then I've got another shot to work on. Um, yeah, there you go. Anyway, guys, thanks for coming to the stream. This impromptu stream from the JP Mertroid ship, clearly a whole new setting. Um, yeah, and I'll catch you guys uh, in the near future very soon. Oh, be sure to go to Jurassic Unicast channel because hopefully I'll be there on Thursday tomorrow uh, in the evening time UK about half eight uh, to discuss Gareth Edwards' Jurassic news. And uh, yeah, anyway guys, see you later and uh, bye, I guess. Is that that's, that's the way we say goodbye? Yeah, bye. What a way to run a railroad. Now, as I was saying...